GTX 1080 or Vega? 1080, 1070, or wait Vega, for Vega. Or 1080 Ti for wait future for Vega, proof Vega, build. Switch to NVIDIA. Planning a new build. 1080 Should Ti I wait for Vega, Vega, Vega 6? Wait for RX Vega? Wait for Navi? So at GTC last year, we expected to get AMD Vega in early 2017. But as the slide helpfully points out, the timeline was subject to change, and change it did. It is now August. <clears throat> but today, we finally find out. Was Vega worth the wait? Synergy allows you to share your mouse and keyboard between multiple computers at once. Check it out now at the link in the video description. Meet Vega, or more accurately, RX Vega 56 and 64, the consumer versions of the Vega Founders Ed <coughs> excuse me, Frontier Edition cards that launched back in June of this year. It's named for the number of next-gen compute units on board. If we compare it against the Frontier Edition, we can see that we're on par for compute units on Vega 64, but we've got about half the video memory at eight gigs, and our clocks are a little lower much lower in Vega 56's case. But like that card, and one of the likely reasons behind the delays, they both have HBM2 memory, the newest revision of the blazing fast memory that first debuted on AMD's own Fury cards back in 2015. Which both does and doesn't feel like a long time ago, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, aside from actually basically Everything new to Vega is a tile-based rendering mode that AMD calls the Draw Stream Binning Rasterizer, a feature similar to what Nvidia implemented on Maxwell that AMD tells us will improve performance without any extra work from game developers. Let's meet the lineup for today. We've got Vega 56, both air and liquid cooled flavors of RX Vega 64, and the GTX 1070 and 1080 that their pricing puts them up against, and we'll be treating all three cards to our mainstream gaming platforms from both the red team and the blue team. At the top end, we immediately see the Vega 64 liquid cooled card pull out into a comfortable lead, though this quickly changes in Rise of the Tomb Raider where the GTX 1080 overruns it. Moving a tier down, while the Vega 56 significantly widens and closes these gaps on the 1070, at times appearing like a kind of 1070 Ti, this theme of trading blows seems to take place across all of our gaming benchmarks and our synthetic tell a similar tale. So if you're an AMD fan who wanted to see competition, you're going to be happy. But if you wanted AMD to blow the doors off Nvidia, well, you might be a little disappointed. You'll be more excited about the productivity applications. In Cinebench R15, Blender, and Adobe Media Encoder, we see a clear trend favoring even the air-cooled RX Vega 64 over the GTX 1080. Something that we're not entirely surprised by, but we're happy to see considering AMD's traditional strength in general purpose GPU tasks. Unfortunately, another point of divergence is power consumption. The RX Vega 64 is an absolute hog when it comes to power, to say nothing of the liquid-cooled version, and thermal performance isn't much better for the air-cooled Vega 64 either, with the heaviest throttle out of any of the cards we tested. You actually need both 8-pin power connectors for these cards. Ouch. With that said, the value proposition here is still pretty compelling. Our air-cooled RX Vega 64 is quite close to the GTX 1080 Founders Edition in gaming, while the liquid-cooled variant is a better performer, but one that's ultimately held back a little by its higher price tag. For productivity and GPGPU though, RX Vega really shines. Of course, the same is true of the excellent productivity performance of RX Vega 56. But the real story is gaming. Holy balls, we're actually doing pretty great at this price, especially since we couldn't even find a GTX 1070 for less than about $430. Though with that said, the value argument of the entire Vega lineup 
is pretty complicated because the higher end cards may not be purchasable without AMD's value added bundle. So we're talking a discount on a Ryzen 7, a FreeSync monitor and some free games that seems to add about $100 to the price, though AMD says it's worth $420. So the question really becomes, Vega 56 looks pretty good, with or without the bundle, depending on whether you want that stuff that's part of AMD's strategy to deter coin miners from buying these cards. But at the very high end, the Vega 64 liquid cooled at 699 with rebates and games, that one becomes a tougher sell. But feel free to tell us if we're wrong in the comments below. So conclusion then, the wait is finally over. Vega might bear more similarity to the performance and power consumption profile of Nvidia's last generation Maxwell architecture when it comes to gaming tasks. But the good news is that it's enough to be in the conversation for high-end GPU buyers and those poor folks with high-resolution FreeSync monitors that now finally have a real option for a graphics card to drive them. The only thing remaining then is to see what Nvidia has up their sleeves with Volta. Synergy. It's symbiosis. It's energy. It's a software product that lets you solve the problem once and for all of having two keyboards and two mice because you can share one mouse and one keyboard between multiple computers. So whatever your reason for having more than one computer, laptop and desktop, um, you know, Linux workstation and Windows machine for gaming or Mac or whatever, it works on everything, it's amazing. You just install Synergy and you just seamlessly move your mouse between the computers. Wow! They've got basic and pro options with a one-time payment and advanced features include things like clipboard sharing between the computers for easy cut paste, dragging and dropping files between computers, the ability to set up hotkeys, and more. And the best part is you can use our link in the video description to get 50% off Synergy today. So thanks for watching guys, if you just liked this video you can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum which you should definitely join.